Mazda already have a large number of SUVs available in their lineup and it's about to get even broader over the next couple of years with the introduction of several new models. And just to make it even more confusing, they already have two seven-seaters in their lineup. There's the large CX-9 and this one, the ever so slightly smaller CX-8, which unless you're a Mazda train spotter, you're going to have a hard time telling the difference between the two. Mazda's Kodo design language has been around for about the last decade or so, and in the case of the CX-8, it still looks really good, if just a little bit dated. But this design has proved so successful that other manufacturers are now borrowing bits and pieces of Mazda's design. I'm looking at UMG. At the front, we've got the big signature Mazda grille with the emblem that houses this car's radar cruise control. And the light clusters here throw out a lot of light, but as best I can tell, there are no daytime driving lights with this car. And I think that's a first. I thought they had to be in all new cars, but apparently not. The CX-8 looks good in profile. It's classic Mazda. This entry-level sport model gets smaller 17-inch alloys, but they do look a bit more special because they're finished in a darker color. And the only other way you can easily tell this car apart from the larger CX-9 is the different shaped rear window. At the back, the CX-8 and the CX-9 do look very similar, although the CX-8 is just slightly narrower and it also has a badge on it that says CX-8. These light clusters look good and being a seven seater, there's not a huge amount of room in the boot with all rows of seating up, just 209 litres of space. Knock down this back row, you get 775 litres, put down both rows, you could almost park a semi-trailer in here. This entry level sport model of the CX-8 gets a 2.5 litre naturally aspirated four cylinder petrol engine that outputs 140 kilowatts of power and 252 newton metres of torque. Fuel economy is 8.1 litres per 100 kilometres and it's front wheel drive only. Brake towing capacity is just 1,800 kilograms. Inside, and this is where the entry-level CX-8 has it all over the entry-level Hyundai Santa Fe. This is a much nicer place to be with an attractive but somewhat aging design. There's loads of soft touch materials and even a bit of leather and very little harsh scratchy plastic, which entry-level models from Hyundai and Kia are both full of. But one thing the Korean rivals do much better than this car does for their entry level models is a centre console screen because this 8 inch unit and the software on it dates all the way back to the Mazda 6 from 2012 and it's looking pretty old school now. Now look, admittedly Mazda do put a better version of this system into the higher spec models of the CX-8 with a bigger screen and newer software but this is kind of showing its age. You can use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with a USB cable and the sound system only has six speakers and they make a pretty terrible noise if I'm honest. The air vents are nice and big and are surrounded in this nice metal finish which looks a little bit premium. The climate controls are pretty straightforward and easy to use. There's a small bin there which would be great to have wireless phone charging but unfortunately this car doesn't have that. The centre console is nice and solid and covered in this nice piano black which unfortunately does seem to scratch really easily. We've got the jog wheel here for the centre console screen as the touch function is disabled when the car is moving. Two cup holders, a dual lid opening bin which is a little bit tricky to use but there's a good size space in there with two more USBs and an SD card slot for the nav system. The instrument cluster has two big dials for your speedo and your taco and then there's a small digital screen which really has very little customization available on it at all. In fact so little it might as well just not be digital because it just shows your fuel economy and your fuel level really. The steering wheel again it's the same one from the Mazda 6 uh, has a good feel to it it's leather wrapped with stitching and the buttons on it are pretty simple to use. The seats in this entry level sport model are black cloth and it's a very nice black cloth but the seats themselves are not terribly comfortable there's no electric adjustment it's manual only and you just can't move the seats into all that many positions so getting comfortable in this car is a little bit tricky I don't know if I'd really want to be doing a long road trip in it. Visibility on the other hand is really good in every direction which is great because that bonnet is just huge but with the dark headliner it is pretty dark in here. Now this might sound like a little bit of a first world problem but when you've been driving cars for 15 years that have keyless entry to suddenly go to driving a car that doesn't have it it's a bit annoying. I keep walking up to this car trying to open it by just pulling the handle and nothing happens. So you've got to use this very attractive remote to unlock and lock the door. But unlike the entry level Hyundai Santa Fe this car does have push button start. So the back seat of the CX-8 and 
I'm sitting up very high actually. It's quite a high seating position. It's noticeably higher than the front seat. I did not expect that. This is the first time I've sat back here. But there is plenty of leg room and I'm behind my own seating position. I'm 190 centimetres tall, not even touching the seat in front of me, which is always really good. Plenty of headroom. Reseat passengers also get their own climate control as well. So there's uh, separate controls for fan speed and temperature back here, along with a couple of air vents. No USBs, unfortunately, and it is pretty dark back here with the dark headliner. Windows nice and big though. We've got an armrest with uh, two cup holders. So look, it's actually pretty comfortable back here. All right, just for shits and giggles, I'm trying the back back seat in the seating position it was in before. And uh, for a small child, it'll be fine. But for a grown up, yeah, no, not so much. My knee's hard up against the seat in front of me. These seats obviously do uh, recline and can be uh, slid backwards and forwards. But in its current position, no way, no headroom either. But there are a couple of cup holders back here and the seats themselves are actually pretty comfortable. Now I've just got to get out of here without knocking the camera over. The joys of solo filmmaking. Oh, this is an attractive angle. Mazdas have a reputation for being a bit noisy on the road, but I'm not noticing that here. It's pretty quiet. Although the CX-8 is the smaller of the two seven-seater Mazda SUVs, it doesn't feel small in any way. Like, there's more than enough room here. I actually almost feel like I'm sitting in an armchair. I can only imagine that the CX-9, which I haven't sat in, must feel huge because this is already pretty big. I think 2.5 litres is about as small as you want a naturally aspirated engine to get, especially for a car this size. It doesn't feel underpowered, but you do kind of feel like you're at the upper limit of what this car can do. The seating position is pretty high up as you'd expect for an SUV of this size, but as I said before, it's just the seats aren't the most comfortable and I'm really missing not having lumbar support and the bottom cushion is at quite a low angle and I can't adjust that, it is what it is. I just don't know if I'd want to be on a road, long road trip in this car. Just trying out the uh, radar cruise control now in some medium density traffic and it's pretty good. I'm, I've got a good distance from the car in front of me. We're just sort of cruising along at uh, about 46 kilometres per hour in a 50 zone speeding up and slowing down as the car in front of us does. But like a lot of these systems, it does, whoa, whoa, Nelly. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, we lost, uh, we lost sight of the car in front of us there and we were just accelerating straight towards the back of it. So um, yeah, that's the limit of these systems. You really do still, they're not perfect. You've just got to shadow the brake just in case. There are no drive modes, but there is a switch down here labelled Sport, and that uh, should really be just labelled Noise, because all it seems to do is hang on to the gears longer and make more noise without actually affecting the performance in any way. This car has a six-speed gearbox, and it usually finds the right one. Uh, there are no paddle shifters, but you can change gears manually with the centre shifter. The ride here out on the freeway actually feels just a little bouncy. Like we're kind of bobbing around all over the place a little bit. Not badly, just enough to be noticeable. But Mazda have managed to infuse some of their great driving dynamics even into this big car. It still feels a lot more car-like to drive than many of the other large SUVs on the market. So as entry-level large SUVs go, I do think that the Mazda CX-8 is definitely a step up over the Hyundai Santa Fe but maybe just not quite as interesting to look at as the Kia Sorento. At just over $44,000, you're getting a lot of car for the money, but make no mistake, the Mazda CX-8 Sport is really not designed to go off-road or tow or really do anything other than lug a large number of people around. But in terms of stylish, suburban, affordable transport, it's a mile better than some of its rivals.